dealing with oppression now. And that's what pisses us off. That's what makes it hard to watch. That's what makes it hard to see. It's hard to see another black man get shot down by the police and they get off scot-free and nothing happens. And we go marching, talking about Black Lives Matter. And the next day we go back to our houses as African-Americans going back to celebrating these holidays. And it happens again another month now from now. American, we've been Negroes before, we've been Afro-American, we've been all those different nationalities, right? But we've never been called who we truly are, which is an Israelite according to the Bible. You are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. If you if you proclaim black, you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right. Right? So your next question should be, how do we know that? Do you think we can prove that according to the Bible? Let me ask you a question, sis. Is our slavery written in the Bible? The slavery that we went through, slaves, ships, shackle chains, our women raped, our children bought and sold, all those different things. Is that in the Bible? It is. What are we going to show you? Give me Romans 8 verse 16. <laughs> what we show our people, we're showing we'll our people is that the, the Bible here tells our history and who we are, who our foreparents are, right? And by knowing that, that should invoke change and repentance in our people so that we can come out of the situation that we're in. Because what's going on in our community today, sis? How's the black community to you? No comment? Why is there no comment? Because it's not good. It's not good. You got gang violence. You have single parent households. You have drug addiction, drug abuse, right? We have abortion clinics going crazy. Guess what else we have in our community? We have Christian churches on every block. Are those churches helping our community at all? The pastor's doing good, but nobody else is, right? Read Romans 8 verse 16. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit uh -huh. that we are the children of God. So it says the Spirit is supposed to bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Because by knowing that you are a child of God, so to speak, like a lot of Christians say, I'm a child of God, but knowing that you are the true children of God, and, what, and you start turning back to serving God the way you're supposed to serve him, he's going to actually put you out of the situation that we're in as a community and put us on top of everything else. And we will no longer be at the bottom of, of society, but we'll then be on top, ruling with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is the black Messiah. You understand that? So what is the spirit that's going, that we're going to bear witness with in John 6? Because it said the spirit bears witness with our spirit. Read. John chapter 6, verse 63. Read out. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit is nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words that are written in this Bible are spirit. So that means that our spirit is supposed to identify with the words in the Bible, and that's going to prove that we're the children of God. You understand? Then give me Deuteronomy 28. 
because you mentioned how slavery may not be in the Bible, right? All these different things. Check your flyer out, as a matter of fact. Look at the front of your flyer. What does it say? The very front, the title of your flyer. It says the truth about slavery, right? The truth about slavery? So let me ask you a couple of questions on slavery, and then I'm going to see if it's in the Bible. Were our, what happened to our children during slavery? Okay. They were they were sold and given you saw roots? You watched roots before? Or oh, twelve years a slave? Why people sold on auction blocks by we, we were slaves, right? We had masters, right? And what did they do? If they bought and sold us, right? Let's get that. Deuteronomy twenty eight, verse thirty two. Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight, verse thirty two. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Go ahead. And thine eyes shall look and fell with longing for them all the day long, uh -huh. and there shall be no might in thine hand. Now, it says, your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people, and you shall look, your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. That failing of eyes means you're crying now. If you saw Ruth at 12 years a slave, or even just think about it, you have children? No? If you had a child or your little niece or nephew, and you sit, you, you're in the house, the slave master comes and take your child, take the child. And they say, we sold them off to Master Charles in West Virginia, we're taking them right now. What would you do, or your family would be doing? They'd be crying, they'd be angry, they'd be yelling, screaming, oh, master, please don't take them. That actually happened during our slavery. And who did that happen to, sis? Okay. What happened to our women during slavery? I asked you that earlier, I think. What were our women used as? I couldn't go. I'm sure. Okay, one question. I definitely understand. You're really touching me right now, but I can't take it right You can't take it? But you, here's the thing, sis. You have to. It's hard for all of our people to take. That's why our people don't like watching those movies, reading about it, or hearing about it. You understand? Yeah, get that John 8 and 32. But here's the thing, sis. This is the most important thing. You must come to grips with what happened to us because that's what's going to free you. Read right. it. John chapter 8, verse 32. Go ahead. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth is what's going to make you free, sis. The truth about what's written in this Bible here. Right. The truth of God's laws, statutes, and commandments. The truth that you're actually an Israelite according to the Bible. The things that are written in this Bible that we actually went through identifies who you are. And that means that you're not black, sis. Here's the thing, get on um, Ecclesiastes 11 and 7, impression 7 and 7. Make it the wise man mad, because that's what's going on with our people. It, it, it angers you when you see those type of things. When you hear about the civil rights movement and you see the little children dying in the churches, or getting, get, what, the church bombing? A lot of those things happen, and it's hard to take, right? But that should invoke something in you, sis, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Go ahead. Surely oppression. Surely what? Surely oppression. We're dealing with oppression now. And that's what pisses us off. That's what makes it hard to watch. That's what makes it hard to see. It's hard to see another black man get shot down by the police and they get off scot-free and nothing happens. And we go marching talking about Black Lives Matter. And the next day we go back to our houses as African Americans going back to celebrating these holidays, and it happens again another month now from now. You understand? It says oppression does what? Surely oppression making their wise men mad. So guess what, sis? You being angry at that or not wanting to hear that or it disturbs you, that shows that you have some kind of wisdom. Right. It's not a bad thing. You understand? But now you gotta, you gotta, you gotta woman up for, for a lack of, I was gonna say man up, but you're not a man, right? But now it's time for you to, to woman up, face that thing, hear what the Bible has to say so that it'll be in your spirit now. And you can take that with you and start keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments to change your community. We want change in our community. God wants us to change. You understand that? That's the only way we're going to fix it. In 1 Kings 8. What you got, sis? You got to go five more minutes. You need to check that out. But let me ask you a question, though. We didn't go through it much. What is your nationality, sis? Yes. You're a what? Yes. You're an Israelite, exactly. You're an Israelite. From the, you know what Israelite means? You know what it means? 
Get that real quick. Um, Genesis. Get that. Because what does black mean? Black, right? What does African American mean? Does it have meaning? It means you come from two so-called white men that actually enslaved and conquered your people. Leo Scipio Africanus and Amerigo Vespucci. Those are where African and America comes from. Right? So that landmass Africa, people be so proud to be African, that's not even the name of your forefathers. It's the land of Ham, of their forefathers at least. And you're not American. Read that. Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. Let me show you what Israel actually means though. Read. And he said, thy name shall be no more called Jacob. It says your name shall be no more called Jacob. Jacob is our forefather. When you look at black history, they started slavery in the civil rights movement. And the black people today do not know who their foreparents are. They don't know their history. They know, oh, we came from Africa somewhere. And it stops right there. But every other nation can pinpoint their history. The Chinese, I don't know, the Ming Dynasty and all that other stuff thousands of years ago. Guess what? You can pinpoint your history as well. It's written in the Bible. That's right. Your foreparents is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, That's Adam. Right. All these great men that you read about that they paint the, their image, like this man right here. That's not Jesus Christ. You understand? Your Jesus Christ actually is from the same lineage as the so-called black man here in America, from the tribe of Judah. That is our history. That's one of our foreparents. You know, the greatest man that ever walked this earth are our foreparents. That's who we come from. That's right. You understand that? Read. And he said, thy name shall be no more called Jacob. So Jacob is who we come from. Read. But Israel, but what? But Israel, when you say, when we ask you what your nationality is, you say you're an Israelite, this is what you're saying to the whole world, and this is what they don't want you to say about, they want you, they want you to call yourself black, sis. They want you to call yourself African American. Hey. Or as a prince. As a what? As a prince. As a prince, in your, in your case, princess, what do you have? Or as a prince, has thou power with God? You have power with the Most High God. Yes, bro. That's what being an Israelite means. Right. You understand that? But as knowing that you're an Israelite, that means you got to do this one thing, though. Real quick, two more minutes, sis. Give me First Kings eight. First Kings chapter eight, verse forty-seven. This will be how we fix our community. This will be how you can fix yourself, fix your life, so that you can actually change and make it into what the Most High has ordained for us to receive, which is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is only for the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You understand that we're going through hell today because we broke God's laws. And it's time to come back to God's laws so that he can start fighting for us and redeem us. Read. Yet. If they shall bethink themselves huh? in the land, whether they were carried captive. So your first thing to do, what you did, is bethink yourself. You came up saying you were black. But now, you know, a couple scriptures came out. I was like, no, I'm an Israelite. Right? That's the first sign. That's the first step. You bethink yourself in this land here that we were carried captives. Read. And repent. And what? And repent. We got to change our ways. You about to celebrate Christmas? No? Why not this year? Maybe next year. Christmas is not part of our ways. Right. Part of repentance is giving up those hell days, those holidays, and start following the Most High God's high holy days. Right. Our people look forward to Christmas. One day out the year, December 25th, when we're in the midst of Feast of Dedication now, which um, the, the world calls Hanukkah, right? That's eight days, seven days. Right. You get eight days to celebrate the Feast of Hanukkah compared to one day that actually celebrates your destruction and your slavery. Right. Because Christmas is not about Christ. Jesus is the reason for the season. It's not about his birthday at all. Right. That is the other nations, the so-called white man specifically, celebrating his conquest of you during the Dark Ages. Right. Over there in Europe. And they come back in now and they make merry and they give you as gifts. So part of your repentance is once you learn, and you, then you turn from those days and start celebrating the days that the Most High has for you. You understand? Read. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carry them captives. Saying what? Say, we have sinned. First, you have to acknowledge that you're in the midst of sin as well. Like, what is sin, sis? What is sin? It, it, especially what's going on today. It's a great question. What is not? That's what's not sin? It's sin real quick. First John chapter three verse four. You know? Excuse me. Yeah, it. whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So when you admit that you've broken God's laws, 
right? That's when you can now ask God to forgive me for breaking his laws. That's what sin is, right? There's a plethora of sins that our people go through that they don't even know they're in the midst of sin. Like, for example, did you know that women wearing pants was going against God's laws? You knew that? So if you know that, why do our, our women predominantly wear pants now and not a dress or a modest apparel? Why do they do that? You don't know? Huh? Because they want to sin? I, I think if they understood going right? Why do you wear your Because you don't want to get sick, right? Or you know that they'll probably, some places they'll arrest you if you go into buildings without a because the government tells you to do it, right? So, hold on a second, that's the devil. See how that happens. The government tells you to wear a and our people wear that Why? Because they're afraid of going to jail or they're afraid of judgment by that white man that tells you where a right? All right, you don't want your people, what you mean, your men? No. Just people in general? But the whole deal is since our people, and a year, two years ago, ain't nobody was walking around with no damn medical on their face. But you do it because of fear. But now, our, if our sisters understood that the Most High God has a judgment for them for wearing pants, that fear would get into them also. By abiding by government laws, but is it a law that you wear pants or is that a custom? So let's see what God says. Let's just see what the law says about women wearing pants. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. You already knew that. And you knew that that's talking about pants. So we're not even going to go into the diatribe of what women wear and what the men wear, right? You know that women are supposed to be wearing pants. God says that and pants were given to men. Read. And neither. neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Men not supposed to be wearing dresses either, but they're pushing that now. So guess what? 10, 15 years from now, you can go in the belts of one of them places and guess what they're going to be selling for men openly? They're going to be men's skirts and dresses. They're already selling it now, but it's going to be normal now. The same way pants was abnormal. 50, 60 years ago, and women were persecuted for wearing pants, now it's normal. That's the same thing that's going to happen if God doesn't intervene and his laws does not start standing strong in our community. Yeah, right. Watch what God says, though. What? No, but here's what we're teaching you today what God actually says about what our sisters are doing wearing pants, though. Watch this. Read again from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Why? For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. It says all that are doing that. Every single sister that's wearing pants is an abomination to God. You understand? Get that for now. So now, what is God going to do? Do you believe in judgment day? You believe Christ is going to come down and, and judge the earth? You believe that, right? What side of that judgment do you want to be on? Do you want to be the one that actually gets delivered from this captivity, from being an African-American or Jamaican or uh, Mexican? Or do you want to be the one that burns when Christ returns? You have some wisdom. And I can see it in you just by your speech. I know that you know something. But now it's time to get that understanding so that you can start applying this thing to your life and actually get some fear of God in you. Read that real quick. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. Hello? This is what God's going to do with, with people that cross dress read. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish. You will do what? I will punish the princes. The princes, read. And the king's children. The princes, the princesses, and all the king's children. That's the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That are what? And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Everyone's going to get judged, but the wicked of our people is going to get judged as well. He's just not going to take you out because you, you're his people. You must be applying his laws. Right. But why would you want to be punished for wearing that strange apparel? You got to start fearing God. But what's, what's also another judgment, though? 
for breaking his laws that our sisters get by wearing tight pants and tight, tight undergarments and things of that nature. What happens? Do they not get like yeast infections and things of that nature? That's where it comes from. That's part of God's, I mean, that's real talk. When we break God's laws, things like that happens. It's, am I lying? I'm lying? No, it's the truth, right? So get that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 61. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. That's what the Most High brings upon our people as well. Just like we tell our men, you're not supposed to bald your head. When them men shave their head clean bald or shave bald, what happens? They get those razor bumps, a little black, purple bumps. It looks disgusting, right? That's a plague that the Most High puts on you for breaking his laws. What? You understand? So we're going to leave you with that one law. Go back to 1 Kings 8, then we'll wrap up. You got to understand? So just a little bit of fear is enough, but you got to study that flyer, sis. You understand? Call that number and start following us on YouTube or watch. Study. You understand? Read, finish 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 47. Go ahead. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captive and repent. We'll go over this real quick. So the first part is bethinking yourself, right? What's your nationality? Israelite. So you thought you bethought yourself, you're not gonna come up here talking about you black ever again, right? So you're an Israelite, you bethink yourself, read. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive. The next sign is repentance. Now repentance is a process. I, we, there's no way in the world we expect you to hear this word about these, these, these brothers up here that told the Bible that gave me a fly and talked about he told me not to wear pants. We know you're not going to stop wearing pants immediately. But the thing is, that has to be on your spirit now. Our job is just to teach and then let the most I deal with you. You understand? What? I started with pants because that's the one that I saw the most. You understand? We ask what your nationality is because we know that that's what our people suffer with the most. Our people don't know who they are. Right? But there's a whole lot of different sins. You eat pork. The most High says we our diet, we're not supposed to eat shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. That's Leviticus 11 chapter. There's more for you to learn. We don't have too much time. Right? So there's a lot of different sins we can go through, but we know that them pants on our sisters is a hell of a strong. You won't know how many times we get cussed out every time we bring up. They all good. Hearing God is good and all that. But when we start bringing out the laws and them pants come up, you, you did good today. So it's the in the front or the back of the no, <laughs> <laughs> All praises. Finish that off, babe. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carry them captive. We make supplication right here asking God to forgive us for our sins, right. for our transgressions. Read. Say, we have sinned. You got to acknowledge that you're in the midst of sin. Our people really don't have a problem saying they're in sin. Their problem is being in sin and thinking God is good with it and thinking you're supposed to stay like that. That's the issue. Read. And have done perversely. And have done perversely. Read. We have committed wickedness. We have, go ahead. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies. So our job is to come back to God right here in the land of our enemies. Right here. Start keeping the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments. Keeping his customs right here in America. We can do that. There's no law against women wearing dresses or skirts. You understand? Read. In the, in the land of them that carried them captive, uh -huh. saying, We have sinned, and have done perversely, and have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart, and with all their soul, in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. So we pray unto our land. Our land is Jerusalem, not Africa, the land mass called Africa. Our land is Jerusalem, read. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, uh -huh. thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. Then they, we no longer gonna have to march talking about we're men or Black Lives Matter and we want freedom, we want um, equality, all that nonsense. Because the Most High God is gonna maintain our cause. We're not gonna have to vote for Biden, vote for Obama, vote for Jesse Jackson. We ain't gonna have to do none of that. We keep God's laws. The Most High God is gonna free us. That's why we don't do those things. Our job is to repent right here so that the Most High can maintain our cause. You want to fix your community? You got to keep God's laws. Right. You want to deal with single parent household? Keep God's laws. Um, teenage pregnancy? Keep God's laws. All those different things. God has laws, statutes, and commandments that will fix black on black crime. All those different things. But we must turn back to God.
Understand? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.